no one niches down like I do. Meaning, hey, if you guys wanted marketing, we probably wouldn't do it for you because we only do it for patio people because right. of the scalability is, I don't have to say, hey guys, let me show you one of our customers, Ben, his results. Like I show you where we're spending our money in each location and guys in the industry really like that because I'm not like fluffing the numbers. Yeah. Like, hey, this is my result on Facebook. It really sucked this month, right? Like, mm -hmm. so na narrowing it down and niching down so everything we're doing is only focused to us. And I kind of said earlier, I am the McDonald's of this industry where I am not the steakhouse. Awesome. So my name is James Reed. I uh, am currently, I live in Long Island, New York. If anyone knows anything about Long Island, it's an island where New York City, richest pe places in the world, Hamptons, the richest places in the world, um, we have our own little bubble. We started landscaping 15 years ago this October. I was 19 years old, cutting grass, didn't know anything, just like most guys. Snowballed into opening nurseries, opening pizza places, yeah. all failing because I didn't know what I was doing. But I just thought, <laughs> hey, you buy a business and you're rich, right? No systems, no processes. Everything fell apart around me to then meeting uh, my mentor of mine, which was my first lawn maintenance customer, owed me $300 at the time. He always would pay. You just had to text him and pick it up. Hmm. Knock on the door. Said, James, how's everything going? I'm like, and I started breaking down crying to this random guy hmm. about how much I was struggling and falling behind and how much I needed that $300 to make payroll. Then told me his story. And my little story was nothing compared to his story. Became my mentor, became one of my best friends, became one of my groomsmen at my wedding. Then started on the journey of focusing on, you know, profit, scalability, and growing the companies to there. To now we own affordablepatio.com, which is a national, you know, in the early stages of a national patio installation company. Then, and we own everything. So it's a franchise model mm -hmm. to ourselves. <laughs> so... Yeah. We don't have anyone that we uh, franchise to. We own everything. But that branched into call centers, a marketing company, um, our install end. We all, we do Christmas light installs. We own Christmas light warehouse. We have like a bunch of things in that avenue. And then we're also creating software that's going to innovate and change the whole entire patio industry forever. Yeah. It's going to change the whole uh, construction industry but not on my time. I'm only going to be focusing on the patio end. And then when I sell to private equity, that will move into other avenues. But I know everything about the patio industry that I don't want to spread myself out too thin doing right. like roofing or kitchens. That will be the next journey of the business when I have more people around me to do that avenue. And that's a quick sum up of everything that mm -hmm. we got going so on. Probably. Yeah, you, you've got about as many things going on as we do. I try to narrow it down to five things, but inside of those five things, it's like 25 things. Yes. But I want to hear more about your technology play. What are you doing What are you doing in the technology world? So what we're really good at, and without giving too much info, is everyone in this industry, uh, I would guess your industries as well, systems, processes, scalability, they're good at the job. Uh, I don't know if you ever read E-Myth. Mm -hmm. Love it. Right, so percent, yeah. There's a lot. They're mostly technicians. Mm -hmm. Some of them are pretty good at technicians mm -hmm. and managers. Very few are entrepreneurs or mm -hmm. you know the visionary of it. So yep. what I did was I created all my systems and processes, and mm -hmm. I am the McDonald's of the patio industry. We specialize. Mm -hmm. You could go on affordablepatio.com and build your patios right now. Twenty by twenties, fifteen by twenties, all patio options. Pick your colors. Pick your borders. Do outdoor kitchens. And it generates the price right on the website for you. Oh, wow. And obviously, so that's the technology. That's what you no, developed. No, okay. that is the lead gen of the technology. So it's estimating. Uh, it is, you know, uh, material ordering, your CRM, uh, coach. It has everything in one. And again, I'm kind of vague because I can't say too much. And the only reason I can't say too much, everything is already out there. But you need seven different platforms to do one right. thing sure. because right. no one niches down like I do. Meaning, hey, if you guys wanted marketing, we probably wouldn't do it for you because we only do it for patio people because right. of the scalability is 
I don't have to say, hey, guys, let me show you one of our customers, Ben, his results. Like, I show you where we're spending our money in each location. And, guys, the industry really like that because I'm not, like, fluffing the numbers. Like, hey, this is my result on Facebook. It really sucked this month, right? Like, so narrowing it down and niching down so everything we're doing is only focused to us. And I kind of said earlier, I am the McDonald's of this industry where I am not the steakhouse. I have a crazy, beautiful, incredible backyard. I do not want to deal or do with those. I want to do 20 by 20s, cookie cut in and out. So our software streamlines that. So technicians could just show up, do their job, and we're basically their partners for just paying for the software platform. Okay, okay. So when you saw it got patios, what kind of patios are we talking? See, when I when I think patio companies down here in Dallas area, they're building arbors like cedar, usually using a lot of cedar, yep. uh, you know, ar- you know, right. that sort of thing. Is that what you're doing and you're just packaging no. it up or is it, no, is it so material? Let me uh, in some locations, it may be more like that. Where in Florida, you guys know the cage or like the lanai's or the screen yeah. rooms. Yeah, that's really big in Florida. Where in so New York, geographical. Yeah, so exactly. But patios are the flat surfaces. So the pavers, the porcelains, things like that. Adding a structure on top isn't in the wheelhouse currently. We're also not in Texas where we will be, you know, in the next year or two. But we adapted because in Florida, there's so many bugs that they're like, hey, we need these screen rooms. And then we're like, oh, shit. Now we're in the screen room business, but only, (laughs) only in Florida. Yeah. Okay, so New York, I kind of interrupted you. New York's going to be a little bit different. You're going to be doing paved stones and, and that sort exactly. of thing. Exactly. Yep. Okay. But sure, your, your, your client is not the high-end, multi-million dollar backyard. No. Stay away. It's, it's the middle of the road, okay. middle class uh, household, single family households. They want to have a beautiful backyard. Yes. A beautiful patio. So one of, one of our core focuses of our company is um, a place for your family's best memories. What we really express is if you have 10 grand, your daughter's third birthday is going to be just as fun as if you had a hundred thousand dollars is because the people that are hanging out on that spot, if you don't have to spend a lot of money and that end of our company is called affordablepatio.com. So that's what we're going after. Again, we talked offline. I'm a car guy. This is going to be one of my 10 car analogies. Is there more Hondas and Toyotas on the road or Lamborghinis and Ferraris? Yeah, more, more Hondas and Toyotas. Yeah, so yeah. guess what? Let's go after the Honda and Toyota. And they're, better, they're usually better built. Yeah, when, <laughs> better built. Guess what? When there's a problem with your Honda or Toyota, you're like, oh, okay, it, it is what it is. When you have a problem with your $200,000 exotic car, you're on the phone bitching, complaining, and they owe you because yeah. you spent two hundred grand. Yeah, but yeah. It's still the same product, right? Yeah. So, uh, are you are you running the company that uh, installs, or are you subbing out a lot? Is it more sales, and you guys are subbing out the installs? So, New York is self performed. Okay. Because that's where we've been doing it. Our yeah. other locations, which is Florida, Tam- uh, Florida, which is uh, in Tampa, and okay. New Hampshire, is subcontracting model. And the only reason is, is in New York again, we're in a little bubble on Long Island subcontracting is super hard here because there's like, it's so cutthroat and everything's so expensive and, that yeah. like the margins aren't there to use a and, sub and add well, money on top to really make anything yeah. where Florida and New Hampshire, there's a bunch of amazing technicians that can't get work. New York is like, we spent a hundred grand on advertising dollars, just ad spent in New York. In Florida, we spend like 30. So like, oh. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's Crazy. it's just different mar- like, again, just totally different, different markets. Different markets. Yeah, I imagine. And so you're you're learning that market by market. Exactly. So that's why I kind of said earlier <laughs> offline, like I have like a cheat sheet, which is when you own the marketing company, it's very easy okay. to have all the right data and making all the strategic moves. So for example, with mm. Florida, we do really well with Facebook and Google ads in New York. And Florida, we killed it with yard signs. How would we ever know that yard signs would have brought in 40 estimates our first month down in Florida? Where in New York, I think we did 50 for the year, right? 
Wow. You don't know where uh, sometimes the app next door will do better. Angie's List might do better. Like, mm-hmm. every market's so different. No one in New York uses Angie's List, Home Advisor, any of those things. But uh, clients that we have in California, Angie's List is like their biggest source of leads. It's more trusted there, right? So you guys are in how many markets? You mentioned you're near near nationwide, but how, how, so we're how? three. We're in three states right now, and that was only in a six month time period. So, so New, New York, California, and Florida. No, New Hampshire, New York, and uh, oh, okay. I'm saying okay. California because that was what they're. Sorry, that, yeah, that, that threw me off. I was like, did you decide to go with the hardest state in the country? <laughs> yeah. No, that's why we picked Florida. One, because up in the Northeast, we're seasonal. So right. we only work nine months here. So now uh, next year, like I'll be living in Florida for the winter months. And then we're going to be, so like I said, and we did three states in six months or so that now it's just going to keep going faster, 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 and yep. faster. So when I said earlier, like, sort of nationwide like we are but if you watch this a year from now it's like oh wow now they're in eight spots or ten spots right. so again it's all depending on when everything goes live and when people actually watch this <laughs> no doubt no doubt i understand um we uh at, at scoop soldiers we are nationwide in that we offer service from tampa florida and orlando jacksonville of uh, fort myers all the way to seattle and portland Wow. So we're nationwide. We're coast to coast. But at the same time, we're not in the Northeast yet. We're not in the Midwest. We're still only in about 17, 18 states. So we still got a lot of room to grow. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, 2023 was our coast to coast year. That was our motto for 2023. It's coast to coast 2023. That's amazing. I love it. But you'll see when you come up into this area, totally different. Oh yeah, we've got franchisees that have spent have lived up in the Northeast that have told us it'll be a totally different. I know oh. it's a good market though. There's lots of poop scooping business up in the Northeast. Yes, uh, lots, lots of successful ones and uh, good people. Right. Uh, so I know it can happen. But you're right. It's a totally. Uh, you know, we have such a diverse uh, and and well, the size of our country uh, and the ability for you to expand, the ease of expanding state to state in in business. I love that. But there's no doubt every state, every city for that matter, let alone state or region, has yeah. its own culture. It has uniqueness to it, even in the simplest of services like poop scooping, patio installs, or anything. It's 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 there's definite nuance depending on what part of the country and what zip code you're in. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like you said, the culture, like answering the phones and showing up in Florida was enough. Where yeah. in New York, like mm-hmm. you have to come dance, jump through hoops, mm-hmm. give a bottle of champagne just to get, you know, the competition. And don't forget, I'm on an island. So you could travel an hour. We right. could travel 20 minutes. <laughs> so, so, you say, so you're on an island. You haven't expanded beyond Long Island in that region. Is that because there's just not a lot of economic opportunity outside of that? Is it because the business cult no. environment isn't very friendly? How, how, what, what's kept you from staying just on Long Island, going all the way to Florida or all the way to New Hampshire, than just <laughs> expanding to the next city over? It's all about the people that are around me. And there's three things to every one of our businesses, like home, like service businesses. It is sales oh. marketing people Mm -hmm. and equipment and equipment is equipment like you know skid steers or you know the scooper the trucks i use but equipment is crm software you know everything i have the people in those areas that believe my vision is so big that everyone's vision and dream could fit inside mine so when i'm around great people it's way easier and the other reason is we are so seasonal here we had a major void over the winter that we needed to go somewhere that, right. hey, we could fill that void. Then, hence why, in second, we went to New Hampshire, because filling that void over the winter was our first priority. So we right. did New Hampshire, and now our next two will be more in the south. So me and my brother-in-law were more available over the winter months. Because right now in New York, I we do about 150 estimates like each month, but it's so seasonal. So after September, it drops to 20. December, right. January, February, yeah. zero. So just strategically, I'm bootstrapping everything myself, self-funding everything myself currently. Mm-hmm. So, hey, where do I have the most time and most upside? Let me go after these. 
And then in the next year or so, then, you know, private equity investments will come in and then that will add gas. So you plan to do that that fast. You plan to find private equity um, in the coming 12 months or so. That's fantastic. Yeah. 12 to 24, right? Right. Like, whatever the things, I'm very big and you guys might like this, like, I like things that naturally happen and feel right than just jumping into the cold water and not being prepared. Yeah. So that's how it just goes like to who I am. I have a lot of amazing friends. Again, Long Island guys is no, like, it's crazy. We have hundred million dollar houses. Like, so Long Island, you have those connections very, very easily to get to the right people. So when I feel like it's right, I'll be able to do it. It's also fear, right? I told you guys, I'm very honest mm-hmm. and vulnerable. It's also scary. So yep. I have to break through a couple of these barriers myself before I give my baby up and say, hey, sure. where are we going with this? Right. Yeah. So a lot of private equity, in my experience, they want to have controlling interest, uh, which in my past experience has been when the conversation ends, <laughs> at least for now, at least for now. Yes. Uh, tell me, James, uh, I, I see your shirt, Patio SEO. Yep. Uh, tell me about that part of your business. Uh, you're doing something with SEO. Uh, it's all more. Yeah, it's all digital marketing. So yep. what happened was during like COVID, a little before COVID, I hired an amazing guy, Evo. He did like video and web building and he was doing stuff. But the problem was it was like, oh man, these videos are taking three hours for you to edit at your wage in New York. It's like, oh my God, these videos are costing me like a hundred dollars to disappear in five seconds, right? Like in the algorithm. So then we hired someone else, hired someone else. And then it snowballed into like eight employees and in-house, right? All the marketing end. And then after COVID, like, you know, we were growing and growing and growing. So it was all good. After COVID, it dropped off. So we were like, all these guys used to always ask me like, James, can you help me? Can you do this? Can you build that? We would always say no. And then it turned into, we'll start taking on clients. And now it turned into a 15 person marketing company that only specializes in, you know, hardscape, right? So outdoor kind of service. Right. Mm-hmm. We don't do restaurants. We're not doing a car while like, cause we have a value of we are not your marketing company. We are able to grow your brand and help you with your business as well. So a lot of the people that work with us in the beginning, they'll be like, wow, James, like, I can't believe people are paying you for this service. And then if they talk to anyone, they're like, I think they're actually that we're undercharging because we don't just build your website. We build the brand. We help you with this. Like, what directions? How can we help Is it you? a monthly retainer? Uh, no. No. So a lot of that? it's just like per service. So like, say you build a website with the video editing and all the things on it. It's like $8,000 for the website, but it's not like, like if I show you the websites we built, you'll be like, Oh, well, this is a lot more than a website, right? I see. But yeah. Websites are so like, Oh, it's a website. Well, there's different la- layers of websites. I paid a thousand dollars for a website and I paid $75,000 for a website. Exactly. And I can't say that I got my money's worth out of $75,000 for a website, but I also can't say that I got the quality that I wanted right. for $1,000. Yes. So after this, if I send you a couple of the websites, you'll be like, this, perfect example. You'll be like, that's all you charge for this? Yeah. It's just, but again, depending, our market's hard. Yeah. So who are you dealing with, guys, you, where? You specialize in websites specifically for patio. That's it. Yeah. Nice. But yeah. Oh, well. Hardscape, no, outside, no, no, hardscape. Hardscape, it's okay. Yes. Hardscape. Yeah, so hardscape. some landscaping, the patios, you know, things that me and my team know. And the reason we've done this, I don't know if you've ever worked with a marketing company or have stuff in-house, we don't need to hold your hand. We know more about your company than you probably know. Right. So it's you very know. quick. What? So like we're working with uh, like a landscape company right now. We also have a fractional CMO end of our company where you get all 15 of the uh, guys to be working on you. And what's really nice is if you think you're going to hire a video editor, I'm making this up and it's in house. It's like, all right, well here in New York plan on five grand a month to pay him where with us it's 4,000 a month. You get Google ads, Facebook ads, video editing, web creating, SEO, uh, working with us, building the brand. If you want to help hire, we'll run ads for you with the high, like it's everything. And the right. reason is, is because it's split with so many guys that like, 
you don't need someone working 50 hours on editing for you. Right. right. Yeah. You've, you've split the resources in exactly. your, 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 yeah, that it, it makes perfect sense. It's one of the things we've thought about doing with our white picket team uh -huh. management brand. Yeah. Um, we've done it more so on the accounting bookkeeping side is where we've started because that's where I, that's where we recognize the huge need was like our, whether it be our franchisees, our existing franchisees, whether it be just talking to people in the business in, in the, the lawn and landscaping industry or the pet waste industry for the last 10, 15 years. Oh, yeah. Bookkeeping is, it's, it's really hard to find a good bookkeeper, you know, for, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to find that. I, I constantly got people, you know, franchisees, we do books every week, but yet most people's small business, they're not getting their bookkeeper looking and updating their books, but once a month, at least yeah, at, at, at most, at, at most. most. <laughs> and so it's just been that thing that we found that we're okay. like, we can provide value here. It's very similar. You've done yes. that media and marketing. Yes, exactly. And yeah, it's man. so funny. Like you say that is because the books aren't hard. The reason the books are hard is because when you find someone, they don't know your business. So right, like, that's hey, right. Then and what's this? Hey, EJ, what's this? Where yeah, with yeah. us? That's why accountant becomes like the biggest line item in, in mm -hmm. people's uh, exactly. P and L's. Yes, and you're exactly right. Our bookkeeping, our bookkeepers that we've got that we've had run our twenty five plus million dollars in internal businesses for the last five years, we can now point that at other small businesses. And plug that whole system and process into a two hundred and fifty thousand or a five hundred thousand dollar a year Boeing business, and and, and we, we we're able easily able to help them because we've got that system and process down for our businesses and it's weekly, so they can actually use their books as right, opposed right. to looking at something that's thirty days old. Yeah, no, exactly. And again, keeping it niche down, it just it makes it more efficient, more simple. Like, yeah. oh, obviously, I know what this is, and I obviously know what that is so going what i was saying like with a restaurant like i don't know everything about your restaurants but like my team where you have to educate us on pan fra um, whatever it is you know like we don't know where with the hardscaping industry like my video editors could probably tell your guys how to install a patio just because <laughs> they watch they know and they understand everything my seo team could tell you every manufacturer of pavers across the nation mm -hmm. right? right so it just makes it a little easier and streamlined similar to you guys right so you've been building this marketing arm you mentioned covid and you went through covid see this has been going on by year, years beyond pre even prior to covid but all in-house just uh, just for us okay it's small so you started <laughs> you started pointing that outward how long ago uh i would say our one year is coming up okay awesome. and that's one year for other you know, people, right, right. Where if you go on Long Island and type in patio, you'll see like, that's why I told you guys, I think offline are using this. Like mm -hmm. I show you my stuff. So obviously mm -hmm. it's going to work where I don't have to show you a client and be like, mm -hmm. this guy's mm -hmm. getting great returns. Yeah, it's your, it's I, I your... show you mine. And it's like, oh, how do we do in March? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We made three grand for the whole month of March. They're like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not lying. Like mm -hmm. things happen. This goes on. They're like, they like that. I'm honest, transparent and showing them. It's not, I'm not, I don't have, it's not golden over here. It's not like right. we all got to right. figure it out. You guys know some months are good. Some months are bad. Something right. happened. Sometimes it doesn't happen. So there's obviously certain boundaries in that transparency. Uh, do you take clients that are direct competitors of yours in Long nope. Island? No, okay. you nailed it. So we don't take anyone in an hour radius of another person. Okay. Okay. We, we may build their website, but no advertising or anything right. in that because that's so unfair. And guess what? One reason we started the marketing end is because guys would do that. I would be like, wait, me and Ben are using the same guy in the same city? This right. isn't fair. So we value how much we care about the guys in the industry that also for our services, it, it's a couple of hundred bucks or a couple of – like mm -hmm. I just rather not – it's not worth ruffling worth feathers that. for that little bit of money. Yeah. Right, right. So, James, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more uh, about – is is Instagram the main platform that you've been utilizing to grow your social media presence, or is it beyond Still, that? Um, if it's for like our install ends and yeah. everything in that end, yeah. yes, we do. Uh, we do pretty well on Facebook yeah. and that. But yeah. honestly, everything drives everything to our website. Our website's our best salesman. 
let me be sorry i yeah. probably didn't say that because the road to 100 million subscribers yeah, so that's just my personal brand right and right. i don't really have anything that i'm selling meaning like yeah i'll mention you know marketing and i'll mention things but you guys know like i'm just there helping i'm never like hey you want to make money swipe up and i'll teach you how like, <laughs> like I, don't, I don't do it that the reason i do it is to meet meet great people like you and again it's the Alex Hermosi way of like the big play of the more I give when my software yeah. comes out, yeah, yeah. they're like, this guy is awesome. I'm going to do what he wants to do. So most guys build a product and market it. I'm actually building marketing something. I don't even have built fully built yeah. yet. Yeah. So when it comes to market, I'm already trusted and valued. And like, I don't have a crazy amount of followers. The people that follow me, like, I'll jump on a call with them and they'll be like, Hey James, can I pay you to talk? And I'm like, you don't have to pay me. Like it's all good. Yeah. Someone yesterday talked for an hour. Just like, it's he's like, what do I owe you? I'm like, nothing. We're just talking as friends. Like I'm driving. I'm not in front of my kid. Like, you know, it didn't really take up much time. Yeah. And he then loaned me 500 bucks and said, just for all the, th all the information I got from your content, this is an understatement and gave me $500. Wow. And, That's awesome. And it's crazy because I'm not at like, I'm looking to help. Like, it, you know, it's all, it's all good. Right. And I'm very transparent. Like, Hey, if you don't mind me driving and not fully being like in front of a screen and focusing right. on, they're like, yeah, I don't mind. I'm like, I don't need to charge you. It's all good. But I yeah. impact that guy so much. I've grown guys in my coaching group from 600 grand to 2.6 million in two years and profit, not like mm -hmm. people are so obsessed with revenue numbers and that drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, we charge $9 a square foot in Florida installed for patios. We charge 20 in New York. My friends in California charge 38. So doing a million in Florida is doing 1.2 in California. Right. Yeah. So people are like, man, look well, at my it's also, you. And it doesn't yeah, mean revenue. Revenue doesn't often mean anything. A perfect example. I'll be the first. And again, and I love that you talked about transparency. That's one of our uh, core values at Chorby. Love uh, it. Is, is transparency. We have we have three, and that's one of the three uh, transparency. And so we're developing open book management uh, strategies. We plan to duplicate that within White Picket Team <laughs> Management uh, and build a, an open book management concept that we can actually offer to the other home service businesses. Uh, I totally just lost my train of thought on where I was going with that. Oh, you're talking about revenue. Yeah, Chorby, for example, Chorby's a great example of that. You know, it's a it's a seven, eight million dollar a year in revenue business. But when it was half the size that it is right now, I made more money from it. Oh yeah. It made way more money when it was half its current size. Now we've got a long term plan and we're reinvesting all of that money. Uh but with growth does not and with revenue growth, top end revenue growth almost never automatically equates to net profit. Never. And that's why I even have like a graph that I, that my team made that like, you'll make a hundred grand. And then when you make that higher, it drops down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what a lot of guys go. I made more money when I was smaller, yeah. bigger, isn't better. Smaller is better. Where like, no, yeah. you just can't push. You got to push through. Then you'll make 200 yeah, Great. and then it drops down. And, and they, and pushing through is almost <laughs> like the entrepreneur version of what you hear investment bankers and such talk about with um, uh, interest. What do they call it? Compound interest. Yes. Uh, that's almost because you're right. You go through these waves and most small business, yeah. going back to the E-Myth Revisited in Michael okay. Gerber's book, most entrepreneurs, they almost plateau in that, in that complicated spot because they can never fully break through to, to that next that next experience of exponential growth. Yep. And it's funny. You guys probably know this. I could teach you guys. I could tell you so much, but sometimes I, I don't even take my own words as, for advice. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> I, I, ben, ben needs to hear me lecture enough uh, to him or to other internal people. Ha, ha, I would say I'm doing good if I take half of my own advice. Yeah. Like that's accurate. I'm successful. <laughs> I'm successful just from taking half of my own advice. Exactly. The other half of my own advice, I'm not even that good at because that takes discipline. Yeah. But it's one thing to be self-aware and recognize that you need that discipline and that you need to do X, Y, Z. It's a whole other thing to actually have the discipline. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it is. So one of the guys in my coaching group, I, 
I pushed him to go get a skid steer, very scary, eighty thousand dollar machine. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not as busy as he thought. Blah blah blah. And like I talked him off the ledge. His wife came in. Like I've been telling him it's not a big deal because I broke it down. Hey, let's look back at your past estimates. Wait, you sent out more estimates and more revenue than last year. How are your people? Oh, I hired better people. Oh, wait, how's your machinery? So much better. I'm like, wait, you're ahead. And then I get yeah. off the phone. I go to my wife. I'm like, because I beat myself up all the time because we're not doing as well as I want to. And I don't have as much and I have more debt than I've ever had. But I'm in the low spot. And, and I know yeah. it for some reason I'm in my own head. But I could tell everyone else what they're doing wrong. But then I, bet, then I have to snap out and be like, I'm in the low spot. It's all good. I'm pushing up to this. So well, you talked about it earlier. You, you're, you're afraid a little bit. You're uncomfortable a little bit, but that's kind of what an entrepreneur is supposed to do. You're supposed to walk that line of being uncomfortable and a little afraid. We were just talking about this. As Ben mentioned, we had a we we had back to back. We've never had back to back podcasts, but we had back to back today, and uh, we were talking about that stepping into that even when you're afraid. Yep. Uh, hell, this podcast is outside of my comfort zone. Frankly, I'd rather just sit in my garage and daydream. <laughs> Getting, getting and just thinking stuff up and vision it, but 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 getting out there and getting outside outside of your comfort is all part of it. You got to be working, walking that edge, that yeah, boundary, we, of being comfortable and being uncomfortable. Yep. Yeah. So I have a friend who's in the finance world, massive company, like two hundred and fifty advisors, like ten and twenty billion under mass, something crazy. And I talked right. to him, and he's like. Are you scared? I'm like, yeah, I'm scared. He's like, all right, you're doing something. Because he yeah. goes, I'm petrified yeah. every day. And when he said that, it's kind of like I told you guys about my my mentor that I met. Like, I'm scared with this. And then when you hear someone like this, exactly. you're like, okay, it's not that scary. So sometimes exactly. you want to surround yourself with people doing bigger things, but then also yeah. bringing people up from below so you all do something amazing. Exactly, exactly. I went through this phase. It's I, I got out of that phase real fast. Uh, but I went through this phase where I found myself watching C-SPAN. Okay. Just watching C-SPAN. And I'd find myself watching that to go to sleep, to fall asleep. Yeah. And what, it, what it helped me with and what I would t joke about, again, I kind of created that habit, got away from that real fast. But I created this habit realizing I'd be watching C-SPAN and, and, and you'd, you'd listen. And again, C-SPAN is so boring. Everybody knows it to be boring. Uh, you, you're pretty much got to be a very special person to like C-SPAN. <laughs> What it's making me, and I smell. And I'm on, yeah, and I'm on that boundary, by the way, of almost being that guy who would watch C SPAN. But it made me realize that my problems in my lawn mowing business and poop scooping business, my problems aren't that big. <laughs> but no matter what they are, yep. they are over, they, they, they can be overcome because when you watch C SPAN, you realize that, man, this world. It's got a lot of problems. It's kind of like watching the news. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of unsolvable problems out there. Yep. Exactly. I had one week I got hacked. Major hack. We got uh, a family issue, a lawsuit, and uh, a stop work order at my project in my back, at my yeah. house. And I talked to my friend, and he's like, wait, no one had cancer, no one died, and mm -hmm. no one robbed you? I'm like, no. He goes, oh, you're fine. Like, and I'm like, fuck, you're right. Like, but in my head, I was just like, how am I? I'm like this with my eyes closed, just swinging. Like, I hope I make it through it. Then you talk right. to someone that has major problems, and you're like, oh man, I should shut up. This is not that big of a deal. <laughs> Most problems within our control are God, exactly. actually not big problems. Problems that are outside of our control that we don't even have control over are the are the real problems. And frankly, you can't stress too much about those. Because you don't have any control to do anything about it. So you exactly. can't stress them. But those are the real problems. Exactly. And, and in America, we're fortunate to, in a day, in the day to day, especially as business owners, um, you know, we're not exactly hurting to feed ourselves or to keep lights on. You, you, you've got to take that into account. That was something huge for me, even when I was young, 21. You know, I was single. I was frustrated with my life. I wasn't particularly happy with relationships in my life, with where I was at 21, whatever. This is 15 years ago. But it became very clear to me that I needed to stop worrying and stressing so much because I lived in America and I wasn't going to starve. I hadn't missed a meal in my entire life in 21. <laughs> Fortunate for that. 
I think I recognize that the, 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 the that's fortunate. Not everybody, even in America, is fortunate enough to say that. And Wait. so it was almost like a weight lifted off of me that like like chill out. Like you're gonna have a roof over your head. Have you ever not had one over your head? And you're gonna be fed. Now chill out and put your head down and get something yeah. done. And in America, we can all do that. Even those of us that aren't as fortunate yeah. as me, that have missed a meal or yeah. for whatever reason, not had a roof over their head at any point in their life. We live in America. If you can just get that mindset right, you can you can recognize that and get that get some perspective in even in that even in the gutter. One hundred percent. I love that. Well, I think you, James, talking about your friends that have been able to help put you back in that perspective. Talk to me about your team that you have with you. What what was it like starting out, and where is it at right now? So when we first started, so uh, Christina, who you guys have dealt with, that's my wife. We have been, this is a big year. We have, I turned 35. We're celebrating 15 years in, in business. You know, not the same things, but in starting out as in the outdoor, right? Mm-hmm. Outdoor industry. And we've been together for 18 years. So we since we were 16 years old, we've been together. Wow. We started it. She worked out a job. Me and a friend started the business together. Really quick, we separated due to, I'm um, you know, out there, like, let's do this, let's do that. And, you know, he wanted to use money and buy stuff. And don't forget, we were also like 19. So yeah. also, <laughs> we also don't know anything about anything. I, I thought by 23, like I was going to be a billionaire, just yeah. flying around private. Hey, hey, I got you beat, James. I thought I, that's what I was mad about when I was 21. I was mad that I wasn't, I didn't have a private jet yet. My dad was a, was a fireman and I was just mad that I didn't have a private jet yet. I don't know yeah. where I got that from, but <laughs> exactly. I, I, I grew up. <laughs> yeah. So that started and then, you know, kept growing, kept growing. Then what we did was a lot of very, very strategic hires, but it was funny is you hire that one person. One thing I recommend, right? Which you guys know, right person, right seat, but you have to create the seat before you create the yeah. person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where at the time, I would just be like, oh, Ben, yeah, you could do this. You're the manager now. And, you know, you kind of had that, which everyone has, right? So you over you overpromoted everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you could breathe, <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. I could relate to all of this. <laughs> right? And then it started to, uh, I went to Tony Robbins Business Mastery, uh, maybe in 2019 or so, give or take. And then uh, it's like, really, like, I got to get the right people. Then my brother-in-law came on, Christina's l- l- younger brother. He is 26 at, right now. So, you know, he's about nine years younger. So he came on at like 22. Me, Christina, and like both of our families, we come from nothing. So like the work was very easy for us because my dad was a mechanic, worked all the time. My, uh, Christina's mom and dad separated. So the mom worked every day. Like we come from yeah. the working background. So the work wasn't the problem. And I am very gifted with this crazy vision of like what we're going to do. The connections also just like, you know, we've only met 40 minutes ago and we're just real people. You could just tell, like, it's just very easy. So starting to get the right people. And then when I told you guys earlier, like my vision's so big that everyone's vision could fit inside and we could do something amazing. So that's where I was able to get Evo, Geo, you know, my wife, all these people that are working with us now is because it's like, Hey, I just want a great job. Well, if we grow to a hundred million dollars, like you would be a part of it. And that's, what's really great. And then growing now we have an office in Ecuador. So Evo, I mentioned to you is from Ecuador and he, you know, he was here. He never was able to go back and enjoy his family because he never had the chance, right? You guys all know he would have to work here where we started to get traction with everything we're doing that he have actually went to go back to Ecuador. And now we have 15 people in an Ecuador office helping everything and managed by Evo. So the marketing what are they, call center. What are they doing? Yeah. Okay. You're answering it. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting yeah, no, you. Go ahead. No problem. Uh, yeah. They manage like the marketing end of the, and the call center end, but little, mm. little trick that we came up with. Well, again, guys, I told you we, we get to cheat because we have a marketing company. Mm. I said, Evo, you're amazing, and you're from, you know, you're here, you're English, you like, you know the culture. We should start running ads in Ecuador in your city for people that were from America that 
want to come back that that went back. So now all the people that work from us worked at the IRS, were teachers that went mm-hmm. back to Ecuador to retire or be with their family, but are Americans. Some of them are like Americans. Some yeah. have papers, same everything. And we're hiring them and we don't have to teach them the cult. They understand everything. Right. And they all work in one central you know, office in Ecuador. And that's really helped because we're actually overpaying. We just hired someone who was an English teacher in Ecuador that was from America. And we're actually paying her more because of the wages down there are so low. And she like loves it because she gets to come back to see her family here mm-hmm. because she comes and works in this office. She works remote. She works back in that office. Because one thing, you know, the trending thing is the VAs and everything. A lot of VAs are going to have, you're like, oh, I'm paying them $5. Well, well if they don't work for you in your office. What's a, yeah, what's a VA? A virtual assistant. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, you know, overseas, Ecuador, Philippines, you know, Vietnam, all these places. The only thing is, is they're actually just going to go get three of you mm-hmm. and make 25 an hour and neglect you because you're not supervising. Right. With us, we have a 2,000 square foot office in Ecuador, and they're all in there at once with Evo supervising and, them all. And is that is that 2,000 square foot you mentioned alluded to it, but I want to confirm. Yep. Having a 2,000 square foot office in Ecuador, obviously you had connections there. It's not like I could just say tomorrow I'm going to open an office there. Yes, you got it. It's about relationships. It's about that community yes. we're talking about. Yep. But once you had that community and once you had that opportunity, having a 2,000 square foot office in Ecuador and paying people there, what you're saying is that the cost is significantly less. How, how much you think the rent is in a 2,000 square foot? <laughs> when, when I think 2,000, I know there's a huge difference even from Long Island to here in North Dallas, let alone in North Dallas, Collin County, compared to Dallas County, yeah. compared to Grayson County, just yep. north. Anyway, so I'm going to take a wild shot in the dark. 2,000 oh, square feet. Ecuador. Go, go less. Go less. Whatever, Whatever you, I it's, think it is. Okay, fine. I'm going to go way two. less. And I'm going to say $300 a month for 2,000 square feet. Ben, what did you say? I said 300. You stole uh, 250 a month. So, oh, I was about to say 250 <laughs> and I just copied Ben. <laughs> but, but in Ecuador, like, you're yeah. the max, like the max you make in Ecuador is like $4 an hour. So like it's the same r- ratio as ours. Awesome. How do you find people that can speak English? We or, run we run all our ads through the marketing end right. and target them on Facebook. Right. If we're really good at understanding, okay, if you're from America, you're gonna like American things on your social media, targeting things and doing keywords and mm-hmm. going after that will show up on the algorithm and they're like, Oh wow, America is like my second home and these people are in Ecuador. And also a part of America, this is like my other second home. Interesting. Smart. See, this has only been a joke at my company that we're going to offshore. In fact, it's, it, I, I joke about that because we've had this debate back and forth for the last 22, for the last year, a little over a year on hybrid work yep. versus remote work. And one of and I and I was historically very much so in favor of fully remote work. Uh, even before COVID, loved remote work, like, loved the idea of it. Uh, and then after three years of and a, a COVID and three years thereafter, I really started questioning the effectiveness of fully remote team members. Yeah. And I routinely had this debate with my vice president of operations. And I kept saying, if we're going to stay remote, why are we why are we sticking to just Texas or just the United States? Why people? Why aren't we offshore in this? Of course, I don't know anybody. There's, but, uh, there's a very yeah. big difference though, of what Cynthia's talking about and what. Well, there is. It's a mix done. because you're you're off you're you're offshoring, but you're you're bringing people to an office in that country. Yeah. It's not yes. fully. It's not remote right. at all. These yes. people are they work they're working full time in this office. Yeah. yeah, forty hours a week. Wow. And yeah, it's totally different. That's I mm-hmm. I've went the offshore thing. Where, like, after our season, like, you know, making this up, like, August, like, I'll shoot down to Ecuador. Yeah. Well, yeah, Where, you get a little vacation. Yeah. And what's good is it's, I don't know, I uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> qualify it as a vacation. vacation. If, if you stay there an extra few days, fly your wife down. The vacation for me is creating. So I don't actually like vacations. Right. And the reason I don't like vacations is because 
like you guys, especially with you, EJ, if uh, if you bring out your uh, boop emoji uh, uh, stress thing right now, when I sit there doing nothing, I go crazy. Oh, see, that's interesting. Oh. I, that's one where, where we differ. I love vacations. Oh, really? But to me, I've never done working. Like, I do. Uh, now, here's what I don't do I won't do cruises, partially because they're boring, uh, partially because I just don't care for cruising, yeah, partially because, at least until more recently, you can't have your full access to your phone. Yeah. When I travel, whether it's I went to Europe last last June to, to uh, London and, uh, and uh, Scotland. Or my favorite place, which is just Vegas, going with my wife, doing couples trips to Vegas. I love travel, both business yep. and person. But I am never away from work, yep. thanks to this beautiful miracle of technology right here. So, no, I'm always on my phone, always yep. working from home. But I believe I love travel. I think I think it's, it breaks up the monotony. Like, to me, if I'm just sitting in an office all day or sitting and working, even, even with the flexibility I've got between – multiple different offices including here at my house uh even splitting that up i like to be able to go places yeah it's still working like like it's create that's when i get my creative thinking done is when i'm breaking up that day to day yeah anyway uh yeah, I, I, love is, I love that uh, i'm always interested whenever ej gets back from a vacation is like all right what's changing <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I come back i come back my vp of ops used to joke used to i should clarify she used to joke that i'd come back and i'd make staff changes yeah and she I, i'm being nice about it she'd joke with me and tell me i fire people every time i come back from vacation that's not true at all but but yeah. it, it, it's because <laughs> the things that were were the, the, the those challenges those problems in your businesses in your business the things that are maybe have been creating a little bit of stress stress is just because a decision hasn't been made and so a lot of times on my my time away my time not doing meetings, because I don't do meetings when I travel, uh, that allows me to think through things, make a decision. So, yeah, I come back, and I've got decisions being made. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So uh, I know you, you are not going to talk too much about uh, your technology that's going to be yeah. released soon. Um, but what else is next? What, what's on the horizon for you guys? I know you've got multiple things going on now. Uh, so again, just building building everything out. We own a lot of the domains and ideas of things. Like we own affordablepatiofurniture.com. So we own affordable patio products. So that all intertwines with the software and like the play on that. So for example, when I come to an estimate and we pick your patio and stuff, nice. we could also put your furniture on there. And also the huge value too about it is after we do your project or then I do an estimate, you don't go with us. Well, guess what? We could still sell you the furniture. Right. And it's like one of these things. And what's so great is our biggest thing is empowering small businesses. So Ben, you don't make the sale, but they buy these couches. You get, I'm making these numbers up, a $50 commission because you did go there. And guess what? We know that the customer didn't have a patio, right? So most of the time, just taking an educated guess, they usually don't have furniture either because they don't really have a patio, right? right? So we have all those avenues. What we're doing with the software too is we own affordable patio products. So you'll get like reminders of like, hey, do you need blades? Do you need gloves? And you could order them right from your phone for your company. Because how many times every one mm. of you guys know, mm -hmm. you're like, oh man, I forgot to get that. I know... Ben told me, but I'm running around like an idiot where now I'm like on my phone. I'm like, oh yeah, ben, good. I'll no problem. I'll be here Wednesday. So just streamlining what, you know, what we're doing and then just moving across. And again, I'm being very honest and transparent. We're also figuring it out, right? Like, yeah, I don't know everything. I'm figuring it out. I'm trying it. And one thing that people love about me, they say is like, you say you're going to do it, you do it. And if you, if it goes bad, you're straight up today. Like, Ah, I messed up. Did, that didn't work out. Where talking about social media and that, they only show their highlight reel. Yeah. yeah. So I'm all about like honest, transparent, and just being me I, and just I always me. joke. I'm going to publish a book someday that is, uh, I haven't started taking the notes, but it'll be easy once I do. Uh, I'm going to publish a book one day, all the times I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. from the simplest from the simplest thing because we're all wrong daily in a statement we might make that we just we're wrong and, and immediately figure out we're wrong all the way to the big stuff like you're talking about exactly 
I even have a part on my Instagram called Shit Happens. And anytime yeah, something happens, my brother-in-law films and he's like, we just drove this pool, this bobcat into this pool. And like, <laughs> people love it because on social, everything's all good and everyone's making money and everyone's all pretty. And look at, look at me take a picture of my chicken parm dinner. That is so awesome. We're like behind the scenes, like that's not reality. So yeah, well, I never I mean, understand the full picture sometimes, but the pictures of the food, I love food, but I you can never make food look good in a picture like that. Like, I don't know. It just never yeah. does it. For me. But I like that shit happens. <laughs> I like <laughs> one. <laughs> and, and it's awesome because like we did concrete once. What's the chances that a dog got away and ran across the person's drive? And now there's footprints everywhere. And it has to happen only when you've done three jobs, right? It's not like your a hundredth job; it's your second job. Exactly right. And you know, then we talk about those things, and that's yeah, why, right. again, I get almost five DMs yeah. a yeah. week minimum yeah. about people thanking me. I like everything you're saying because I'm speaking the way I feel, and they're like, "That's how I feel," and yeah. I'm like. Yeah. You know, I told you guys earlier, like, this guy was super worried and scared. And then I'm like, I'm worried and scared, too. I just, I made it over a couple more humps than you. Right. I was and there where you were. And we're all in a different place. That's why comparing yourself to people is insane. Because you're like, you're comparing what you, are, first off, your perspective, which is usually not correct. Nobody yep. actually knows. Uh, but, but you're also comparing somebody on their journey. Who knows where they were three years ago or eight years ago or mm -hmm. whenever. Yeah. Uh, they might have been they might have been worse off than you are at that moment. So comparing is just it, it it really is not logical. It's very emotional once you start breaking it down. You also talk don't know about being behind them. Like they might be right. going through some crazy shit. You right. don't know. Yeah. Right. And and in that effort of transparency and to talk, uh, James, I'll tell you what I'm scared of this week. I took on another million dollars in debt this week. I bought 10 acres, uh, okay. just just 45 minutes from me, but in an up-and-coming area of North Dallas. And I got qualified, which surprised me to begin with. But yeah, I took on, <laughs> I took on all this extra debt. And it's the first time I've ever bought real estate that wasn't almost immediately going to basically cash flow itself. Yep. And so I'm looking at like the next... 6, 12, 18 months realistically before this place is cash flowing it itself. And yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. Even somebody who tends to, to use debt. I'm not yeah. somebody who preaches debt free at all. You got to be careful. Be very careful. Be very strategic. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm scared of. To be totally transparent is uh, I got to figure out how to get this property cash flowing. Exactly. Yeah. And the, it could take 24 months. It could take eight. Could. You it just could. never know. Yep. But that's what I like is like you even saying that like, oh, you guys have this great company and everything is great. And then it's like, oh, wait, he's scared like me. It's just oh, yeah. I always emphasize to a lot of people. Sometimes it's just another zero on an imaginary yeah. number, yeah. meaning a yeah. hundred grand or a million. All it is is that extra zero. It's still scary. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that the market is so flooded with everything is perfect that when you are authentic and transparent, it makes you stand out. Yeah. Inevitably. Um, yeah. Well, dude, I, I want to respect your time. This is yeah. this is awesome. Um, EJ decided to take over on this podcast. I got like four words in. Yeah. I'm, you know, yeah. if you guys want to keep going, I'm cool with whatever. I, I, I am very, I, you know, things fly. I do two hour coachings and people are like, oh yeah. my God, that was two hours. Yeah. It's just, it's easy. I, I vibe. I'm high energy and it's enjoyable. Yeah. You know, I get accused of the same thing. Uh, ben, James has given us the option. Feel free to ask a few more questions. Yeah, sir. I'll, try to, be, I'll I've... try to be quiet on this yeah. one. I'll, I'll be quiet. I'll... It's... <laughs> No, uh, I'll dig in on this one. I actually have I'm a guest on a podcast in the <laughs> fifteen minutes, so I need to get ready. <laughs> awesome. Uh no, seriously, my team is here and I've spent like very little time uh answering some of their questions. So I want to give them a little bit of time. Yeah, no problem. And we can always do this again. You know, we can be sure. best friends. Sure. that's what I'm about, you know. And uh EJ, me and you, Ben, like we can knock out six hours probably pretty easily. Probably. Probably. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt. Uh, well, and hey, look, so we're on this T-Pick tour where we're taking a rap bus, Pet Waste Millionaire, yeah, sure. yep. to all of our franchisee locations from Tampa all the way up to Seattle later this year. But the second year of the T-Pick bus and the tour 
is working our way into the Northeast and the Midwest. Awesome. That's where we want franchisees next. And so that's kind of the second and third tier, or third phase and third, second and third year of the T-Pick bus. But as we make our way up there, and even before then, for that matter, is we're up and about, mm -hmm. uh, or if you're down here in your yeah. travels, don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to meet you in person. Yeah, yeah. it'd be awesome. Yeah, we'll have... Uh... We might need to carve out like two days, but I'm all for it. Because we only talked about this much. Oh, yeah. I don't know much about you guys besides the little research that I've done. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, yeah I, could, I could spend an hour just on one of our five yeah. initiatives, let alone. So no doubt. So definitely yeah. make sure you follow us and follow yeah. our journey. And let's, let's, uh, let's get to know each other the next year or so in, in the coming weeks and months and year and Beyond. <laughs> I love it, guys. I appreciate it. And ben, thank you so much for reaching out and everything. It's awesome. I love meeting great people like this. Awesome. Yeah, yeah same here.